today the clover system gets it. I'm taking that black box out of there and I'm going to find out what's in it. I've checked my emails. I've written clover. They're not answering. So we're going to find out what's in that black box. I just need to know. So I'm here at my computer and I'm on the page that I published the Guess the Gadget 01 and inside that Clover system we found this mysterious black box and ever since this video I've been wanting to know what's in it and I've been asking you guys but nobody can really come up with an answer although you guys have tried so thanks for that at the very bottom here the 65 CO2 He's thinking about it a little bit more, and he thinks it may be a uh, CD or servo or laser driver. You know, just maybe the power supply for the precision of motors, basically. And I kind of agree. I think it might be a motor driver. And something that kind of gives that away is there's a trimming pot on the side. You can see he talks about it here. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get that thing open. We'll follow the wires first and see where they go and then we'll take it out of there and open it up. We're gonna have to break it to get it open. Anyway, um, thanks for the participation in trying to guess what's in the black box. Now we're really gonna find out. So if you haven't watched this video yet, go back and watch it. I'll put a link in the corner. This is the mysterious black box. And ever since I seen this, I wanted to know what was in it. Let's get it out of there. So there's the box that we've been talking about. You can see that there's two wires coming in here, or going out rather, yellow and green. And then there is another bundle of wires down here. It looks like there's two thicker wires and then perhaps maybe four thinner data lines. And again, there's that trimming pot on this side, I think, right here on the side. We'll look at that in a minute. I've got to actually pull this board and this board just to get this out of here because the wires do run all the way under here and in here. So what a pain. But it doesn't matter. I need to see what's in this box. I'm thinking more and more this is some kind of a controller because of the data lines, the thicker power lines. These two lines look like they run right over to the laser in some way, don't it? Or maybe the motor itself that turns the disc. I'm thinking it's probably the laser, though. Who knows? I'm speculating. Let's go ahead and tear this apart. So I thought I would go ahead and give our mystery box the test with the thing plugged in. I've got an audio disc here and I've got a speaker hooked up. I just want to see if this feels different when it's running. All right, a little shake test. Some said this might be a little micro hard drive. I never thought that, but uh, I'm, I'm giving it the old shake test. And I can tell you that it has no gyroscopic, you know, properties, how it might want to fly around. You know what I mean, when you pick up a hard drive. Anyway, that test is complete. I'm going to get this out of here. In following this box on the other side, with all these wires, these bodge wires, you can tell that it, uh, it powers the servo 
portion of this board. This board's actually pretty nice. They've sectioned they've sectioned everything off and labeled it. Inside this CD is a motor and that's what it controls. I still want to open up that box and see the controller, but that's what it is, definitely. It's a it's a servo controller for the CD player to keep the sound nice and consistent and the same, you know, running at the right RPM and everything. Plus, I'm sure there's feedback about it, too. So anyway, let me see if I can bust this open. Well, I've nearly filled the entire room with this dusty powder stuff. This potted electronic stuff is just nasty. Anyway, you can see I made it through most of it, and then I gave up because it was just... It was putting powder all over everything, and I could see down in the crack, and I really wasn't doing much to show anything, you know? Let's see if I can break this part off. So yeah, it's just a plasticky hard mess. Oh look. I can I can at least see a circuit board. Look at there. So at least we see something, right? Wow, look at that. <laughs> so we see a little bit of something there, huh? Must have gone like this. Yeah, it did. Anyway, yeah, it's not worth messing with. This thing is a servo controller, and that's all it is. Sorry for the uh, lack of joy on that. I'll put a picture in the corner of what a servo driver looks like, if you don't know. Anyway, we're not going to be able to see this one. I'm just seeing little bits. It's basically a circuit board. Look at the picture in the corner. I'll put a servo controller, a typical one, in the corner. That's probably similar to this. What a fail. Jeez. We've said that the mysterious black box was, in fact, part of the servo system. And I thought I would get into a little bit more detail about what the servo system controls. This is the actual CD player here. And this ribbon cable right here leads down to the head as well as the servo systems. And a CD player like this can have up to four servo systems. The first one would be focus and you can see this head that I'm pushing with my hand. There's a little servo motor that uh, maintains a consistent distance between the lens and the disc. So that's one, you know, system. And then fine tracking is another where it centers the laser beam on the disc track and then it compensates side to side as the disc is playing and there's also course tracking and that's where it moves the entire carriage not just the little bit of it and spindle speed can also be measured with servo control however this one is just a two wire so doubtful but i think that there's uh, at least three systems in here and unless i you know can find the data on this i really wouldn't know but anyway, that's what the black box does. It controls where this laser beam's looking. That's what it amounts to, really. Okay, I think we're going. So, yes, there was no joy at all in taking that black box and sawing it open. And I know this, you know, when you have potted material, I learned this back with the Commodore VIC-20. 
like those power supplies, they had the same kind of resin stuff in them, and you couldn't do anything with them. I remember chipping the plastic away from the first transformer so I could reuse it inside those, because oftentimes those Commodore supplies would get too hot and the regulator would burn out. But the transformer was still good. But anyway, that's what it reminded me of messing with this stuff. It's just nasty stuff. I'm glad they don't use it anymore. Anyway, yeah, there's the board that's inside there. And you can see on the side, look at the layers. It's kind of interesting to see it like that. The copper that I cut through. Look at that. So this clover thing has given its life up for science, but that's okay. We got a lot of cool parts here, and I'll put them in my bin. I ended up with a couple pretty nice old school transformers that I might be able to use. Check out this beautiful vacuum tube display. These are really common in CD players and cars of the 80s. It's different than LCD. It's actually a vacuum tube. And there's little tiny wires that run back and forth inside this that make these digits glow. Maybe I'll do a video on it if you're interested in seeing me hack this thing. But uh, let's see what else. Here's an actual clover board. And hats off for the construction. I think... Uh, this board looks really good. I like it. It's nice and neat. It's on a really good quality circuit board, you can tell. And it just looks modern and clean. I like it. So nice job on the board clover. But look at that. We have a bodge. another one of those trimmer and they glued it on the board and bodged it in there Look at that. why do you suppose they did it that way afterthought fixing something that didn't work maybe an upgrade who knows but uh, everything inside this kit was custom made you could tell not very many of these were made at all. I can tell you that for a fact. The way it was hand-wired, unless I just happened to get a really early one, I'm assuming they're all this way. And th frankly, there are quite a few bodge wires and you know, stuff like that going on all through the build. Let me show you the back of the main board. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that bodge. I think that's the um, driver chip, servo driver chip. Anyway, overall the kit's good. We'll switch. So anyway, rest in peace, Clover. We'll reuse your parts somewhere else. Thanks for giving up your body for science. And if Clover would have just emailed me back, I could have saved this machine from dying. Oh well, it was fun. Thanks for watching.